It's believed that Pinot Noir is 2,000 years old. It's uh, thought that it was described by some of the Romans who came to Gaul, France, um, in uh, the first century. If you've ever asked a winery owner to talk about his wine of choice, you're likely to have been treated to a rapturous ode. What I like about it is that it's, it's challenging, it's, it's subtle, but when it's good, it's really good. So it's sort of worth the struggle. What you're less likely to have heard is that global warming could pose a threat to cool climate grapes like the esteemed Pinot Noir. It's really a very special grape. It doesn't flourish in a lot of climates. It's not a very uh, forgiving grape. It tends to like cooler spots. David Graves began his pursuit of the perfect Pinot Noir in 1981 at Sainsbury, the winery he co-owns in Napa's Carneros region. The marine fog that enters the bay blankets Carneros and makes it an ideal place to grow good Pinot Noir. But if some climate researchers' predictions come true, by the end of this century, vintners might not be able to grow Pinot Noir in Napa Valley. Perhaps in downtown San Francisco or Golden Gate Park, for instance, uh, the Berkeley Hills, all areas that are really probably too cold for viticulture now, if it got dramatically warmer, those might be the last places you could grow the cool climate varieties. If you think that's far-fetched, consider this. Researchers from Stanford and other universities estimate that by 2040, global warming is likely to cut in half the area in Napa and Sonoma Valley suitable to grow any top quality wine grapes. And by the end of the century, New England and the Pacific Northwest could be warm enough to make premium wines of their own. It's a fact of chemistry. To produce good wine, you just can't have extreme heat or extreme cold. As grapes grow and ripen, they need heat, followed by a cooling off period. The heat produces the sugars that will become alcohol. The cooling slows this process long enough for the compounds that produce the flavors in wine to develop. Temperatures above 95 degrees without subsequent cooling degrade compounds called anthocyanins, which give red wines their deep color and contribute to their complex flavors. As temperatures increase, the anthocyanins are, are impacted negatively. Their, their chemical structure, the way their bonds are formed, actually split and fall apart. Those chemical elements are literally dropping out of the wine and going from a darker color to lighter colors. What happens in Napa and Sonoma Valleys is important because their high-priced grapes contribute close to half of the value of California's $2.2 billion a year wine grape harvest. But the exact impact of climate change is difficult to predict. As California's interior warms up, the heat could pull in cool air from the ocean, like a giant vacuum cleaner. It may actually get too cold to grow grapes in some of the regions that we now consider our cool regions because of greater amounts of fog, greater amounts of, of cold air being pulled in through the Golden Gate, for instance, into the Central Valley. What researchers do know is that one of global warming's most daunting challenges for California farmers is water availability. The Sierra Nevada snowpack, which fills reservoirs every summer, already has begun to melt earlier each year. And state hydrologists say it could decline 90% by 2100. To deal with water scarcity, David Graves and farmers around California are collecting rainwater to use in times of drought. They're also using technology to determine precisely when to irrigate and how much. But at the University of California, Davis, researchers are preparing for a completely different scenario. They're looking at varieties that could replace the cool climate Pinot Noirs and Chardonnays of today. This is a collection of um, unusual varieties, at least unusual to California, that are somewhat more designed for warmer climates. This is Marsan from the south of uh, France in the Rhone region. It's a, a white grape. Uh, we have it growing here. Most of these warmer climate varieties we're looking at are white varieties, uh, trying to look at their adaptability to hotter temperatures. Uh, then we have some Torontes, which is a Spanish grape grown widely in Argentina. Uh, we have some wines for that to show you today. Torrantes is not your parents' wine, unless that is your parents are from Spain or Argentina, but it could very well turn out to be your children's wine. 
Well, the first wine um, at Torontis. Torontis is... Uh, Welcome to the wine tasting of the future. This wine um, has very aromatic characters in the bouquet and some citrus and grapefruit characters. And it has a nice spicy finish. It takes three to four years before a vine starts to produce grapes. So replacing varieties is a big investment for winemakers. And new varieties present other challenges. Say you find this spicy new white wine on the wine list. Do you know how to pronounce its name? This wine, we say in, Sp in Spanish, we call it Torrontes. You emphasize, you put the stress on the last syllable, Torrontes. Well, let's try the second wine. Mm -hmm. okay. Verdello is um, very much different than your Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc, and Pinot Grigio. It has some grassy characters mm -hmm. to it. Nice mm -hmm. aromatic uh, characters, both in the mouth and the nose. Mm -hmm. the Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, Cabernet, Merlot, the, the wines we know as international varieties. Those have really been marketed well and, and uh, accepted well around the world. It's easier to sell those wines. It's easier for people to know them and understand them and, and purchase them too. That's why California's production of the well-established Pinot Noir quadrupled from 2003 to 2013. Growers have even planted this cool climate grape in the hot Central Valley. At the same time, large wine companies have started investigating the possibility of cultivating warm climate varieties new to California. One of the world's largest wine and beer companies, Constellation Brands, is collaborating with UC Davis on this research. California's wine growers, large and small, are preparing for the vineyard of the future. You need to be very flexible about your approach. You need to look very far and wide for varieties that may, may be successful in the climates of 2080. You need to be very skillful at adapting to changing conditions. You have to be very skillful at adopting new technologies. It's pretty clear that change is the constant in this whole thing.